emphasize takeaways a lot this mm -hmm. spring. Just how pleased are you with the uh, progress and uh, seeing your defense get to that point? Yeah, I think the takeaway emphasis has been been good. I think our guys are, are understanding. You know, it's like anything else. When you set a standard for what you want, you have to have a way to hold them accountable for that standard, and uh, we don't we don't waver on that. And so they understand that they're going to get those takeaways, or there's going to be. You know, a consequence for that. So that's what we've stuck to. So our guys are, you know, what I want to get to is in, in practice when they are just fighting and clawing and stretching to get those takeaways. And they, they know exactly where we're at during practice, how many we got, how many we need. They're talking to each other, and it just becomes, uh, you, know, you get what you emphasize. So uh, I thought we had a good day today getting those. Had a big pick six there in the team period at the end, which was huge. And, and uh, that's what you got to do. That's how you win games. Coach, uh, Coach Wilson mentioned that the defense played well in the scrimmage. Do you want to add to that? Yeah, you know, I thought that it was a good day for, especially being the first one that we've had, you know, with our new system. And, and I thought the kids competed well. Um, and we gave up, in my mind, too many big plays, you know, as a group. But uh, um, a lot of those were, were just some mistakes that we made and you know, missing assignment here and there, which is, you know, understandable early on. But, but um, yeah, I tell you, the, the effort's been, been great. The want to, we just got to be able to get mentally tougher physically, mentally tougher in my mind, and, and that's my challenge. We keep preaching to them every single day, but uh, you know, it's a process of getting the culture changed. It's a process of getting the mentality changed, and, and uh, it's, a, it's a battle that we're going to fight every day. Where do you see the development of the secondary? You know, where, is it, where does it need to be? Yeah, I mean, obviously, you know, and, and all three levels have to be be strong. I think the secondary is one that's, uh, um, you know, was so young last year, and then we still got several guys that, 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 that I strongly believe will be in the mix um, that, that are not able to be out there. So it's been great for those all those other guys to get reps. And, and um, it's, it, to me, it's a position of technique and confidence, you know, and, and you got to have thick skin back there. You know, you, you're going to have, they're going to make some plays. You know, they're going to catch some balls on you. It's how do you respond to that? To me, it's, it's that mental, we talked about the mental toughness, the, the competitive toughness to be able to play through the, the catches because they're going to have them. You know, and, and uh, uh, you've got a lot of great receivers in this league that we're going to play, and uh, the DBs are going to be challenged. I think it's the toughest position on the field to play, and uh, it's a tough position to coach, and uh, it's, it's definitely been an emphasis for us. So I'm proud of those guys. I think we had a lull in today's practice that I didn't like in that area, uh, but we're going to um, address it like we already did and, and keep fighting through it. So, But that group is, uh, you know, they're competing, they're fighting, and I wanted to see them compete every rep. That's my emphasis. Looking maybe more specifically at the Husky position, I think you talked last week about just focusing the discipline on mm -hmm. training the eyes in the correct spots. Where else maybe are you seeing some progress right now? You know, I, I think up front, you know, just guys there that uh, are starting to understand you know, the things we do up front are really different than what they did, you know, from a technique standpoint in the past. And so uh, retraining the muscle memory of those repetitions takes time. And, uh, but I think the group is really buying into Coach Hagan what he's teaching them. And uh, even today, we had several, several opportunities to get pressure on the quarterback. And that changes everything. It changes the whole game. You know, you can sit back here. Anybody can sit back here and throw to receivers and Scali and without the pressure. So the, the pressure has to be there. So I think that's been a big area. And then I think the linebackers as well. You know, it's a group that, that uh, is different guys, you know, that I've been pleased with that have stepped up. And, and uh, we're just learning the reads and the keys and, and just uh, having the confidence to run the show. You know, and just to have that swagger about you. If something's not right, you fix it. Guy up front doesn't line up right, you, you move him. And because uh, you basically, you know, when they don't line up right up front, it's on you. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and we're going to hold those guys to a high standard of, of that. So that's another group that I think uh, continue to progress. Besides, uh, you know, Bach and Thompson, are there anyone else you're maybe experimenting with that Husky spot? Yeah, you know, Will Dawkins mm -hmm. has been, uh, just got some strong reps there today. He was actually the one who got the, the big pick six. And, and uh, he's a very talented young man that just needs to learn the position and, and discipline himself to be able to, to play the techniques consistently, but uh, has a real strong skill set. So I'm really pleased with his, his progress here this week. Coach, going back to the mm -hmm. you go to, uh, just, it just looks like your team trying to take away on the doors in the position. Oh, yeah. What was behind that? Is that your own? Well, like I said, you get what you emphasize. And so I want it to be very visual. And so we, we don't just talk about it. They come in every single day, and the, the number of takeaways is posted on every single door on both sides of the door. So they see it coming, they see it going. And then also next to it is a production sheet of all the strip attempts, all the forced fumbles, all the fumble recoveries, everything that you can do to be we call productive in practice. And we grade that as a staff. And so um, these guys are going to understand how important it is. And uh, we've seen uh, an increase in those just because they're uh, – they're very aware of it, and uh, like I said, it's just uh, it's important to our, to our defensive staff. Going back to the secondary guy, like Rashard Kent, he's kind of the elder statesman mm -hmm. back there. 
How has he evolved since you've been here? And what kind of leader has he developed? You know, I'd like to see him be more verbal within the group. You know, I think that that's a big challenge. You get guys that have quiet personalities. And we have several guys like that. The good, good guys, they do everything you ask them to do, but they got to bring somebody with them. You know, it just can't just be about me. You know, I talk about this. It's, it's one of our, you know, you know, big core principles and core values that it's not about me. And it's, we got to get our focus on the guys around us. And I, and I tell our guys, and I've said it from day one, if, if they will learn to trust us as their coaches and learn to play for each other, and uh, we're going to be a very good defense. And uh, he's one of those guys I want to see him step up and bring guys with him. He has a, a strong skill set. He's got a lot of reps, played a lot of football in this league. And uh, he's the guy that needs to rise up verbally within that position and bring guys with him. Who, who are some of the other guys who you want to get a little bit more out of? Or who are some of the guys who are a little bit more vocal in that second? You know, I, I think that John that Crawford, and you talk about one end, he's another really good kid, just quiet. You know, just by just, just how the good Lord made him. You know, and so he has to really work hard to be verbal. He's doing a much better job there, and I think that's huge. You know, even the guy, you know, at the uh, uh, free safety position as well. You know, we really got to make sure that we understand that that I run the defense from the back end, and those guys are critical to that component. And so, to me, if you're going to play in in the, the rover or the free, if you're going to play Mike linebacker, you got to be verbal. I'm not telling you, I'm not asking you to give pregame speeches, okay? I'm asking you to, to rise up and lead your group. And I tell the Mike linebackers, you run the defense. Whether that's comfortable for you or not, you have to do that. And the position demands it. And I'm going to demand it from you. And you always get what you want to get out of a the guy. They will respond. And, uh, and I think that that's what we're slowly starting to get. And these guys, but it also comes with understanding what you're doing. You know, I will be loud and I will be confident when I know exactly what I'm doing. If I'm not sure, I won't be. That's how we all are, you know. And so it's just like when you're in a classroom as a student. If I know the answer, bam. I'm on you. If I'm not sure, it's kind of one of those things. And I want, I want this. I want guys that rise up and are confident as they lead. And we're, we're seeing more and more of that, and that's what we're going to get. Just curious, all the takeaway talk. How often have you had to order push-ups for guys not calling takeaways a takeaway? Well, I'm going to tell you what. Just today. Coach Inge comes up to me all fired up, and he used the T word twice, <laughs> costing 50 push-ups <laughs> during walkthrough. And after he said the first time, I'm thinking to myself, I don't want to get him. And then he said it again, and he, and he caught him. So he's like, oh, man. So he's 50 push-ups right out there during walkthrough. So it happens. And uh, so, but it's once again, we're going to be aggressively taking that ball away. Just in terms of the 425 scheme and everything, how – you know, what's your sense of the progress these guys made in terms of getting acclimated to the new scheme over the last few Yeah, years? I, I think they, uh, um, it's been pretty good. You know, we've, we've kept it, you know, pretty simple, which is good. We're just trying to get the key components to it, all the, the core prints. And we, we have a lot of carryover in our system that where we can add things and it's not going to be a, a major change for them. And so once you get the basic principles laid for it, that uh, they'll be able to add things in, in fall camp or even over the summer that will allow us to grow up. But uh, I'd say the progress is good right now. So I'm, I'm excited about our guys and where we're at. And I'm just anxious to see us continue to, to have that mental toughness to, to stay with it. Uh, really figure out what they're doing. So that's the big challenge this spring, I think, is with three guys being on the field at the same time, trying to figure out who goes where and what the best position for each guy is to maximize their talents and, and the defensive scheme. What were some of those defensive changes uh, Coach Allen mentioned, Will Dawkins moving? And yeah, you know, Will Dawkins has been a guy that consistently has showed up on the field anytime we play. And Tony Fields has had a, a great spring as far as really making the improvements. He's, he's played for two years, hasn't played a ton of snaps, but has played enough and gotten a lot of reps that he's kind of taking that next step uh, this spring. So we had Tony and Will playing the same position. We just felt like those are probably two of our better players uh, out of the 11 right now. And we didn't want to have those guys playing the same position and not being on the field at the same time. So we moved Will, trying to get him on the field uh, a lot more, which has been a good move. All right, how, how far has he come? Uh, night and day, you know, just from when he first got here, uh, his personal life was a mess. And, you know, I think we tried to get that in order first and made sure because he's got a great talent and he's got a lot of care, but just some direction and guidance and try to, to, to for the first you know, year and a half, two years, really do those sorts of things off the field. And now we're progressing and you can see uh, we can coach him on the field now and make him a better football player and let him use his abilities. Was that like academic stuff or just personal? Uh, all, all the above, you know, all, all the above and, and no, nothing major or anything like that. Just uh, a, a young, immature kid 
who needed to understand what it's like to be a student athlete, what it's like to be a college student, and, uh, and to be on your own and to take care of business. And, and, and like I said, nothing drastic or anything like that, but he's come leaps and downs and leaps and bounds and, and really proud of him, more so as a person than as a football player. And, and we think he's got a chance to be pretty good for us. And Crawford obviously played a ton last season. How much are you guys expecting out of him in terms of just leadership and, and being kind of the guy back there? Uh, quite a bit, you know, and, and we're challenging him on a day-to-day -day basis that uh, just getting better for himself is not good enough. He's got to become a, a better leader, uh, a better practice player, work harder, get his weight up, all those sorts of things. So he's slowly coming along. Uh, what I've been pleased with is he's been able to uh, make the transition from taking a week to learn a scheme or to learn an adjustment to now we can go through it in a meeting and maybe a walkthrough and he has it down. So that's been ple very pleasing and he's had a, uh, you know, he wasn't real productive in the scrimmage, but he's been the most productive DB out there uh, from the spring standpoint. And Coach Allen was saying that he just wants guys to be a little bit more vocal, especially in the secondary. Who are you really kind of leaning on? To, to be with those guys? All those guys. You know, by personality, I think like Tony Fields and uh, Jonathan Crawford are, are just low key guys. They're not real vocal guys. Will Dawkins is a, a real vocal guy. So those guys have to step up. And then you still look at, you know, we, we've got three guys that are not practicing right now uh, and, and Chase Dutra, um, Zeke Walker, and Jameel Cook, and all those guys played a lot of football last year for us, so that I think in, and a couple of those guys are older guys that have some vocal skills that I think will be a big addition once they come back. And with Dutra, he's, he's kind of been that guy for the last couple of years of, of being a vocal leader, but he hasn't he obviously struggled with injury. How frustrating is that to have one of your older guys, more vocal guys, not be able to play? Uh, I, I'll be honest, I'd rather it happen now than in the fall. And, and I think it's been good because it's forcing John and Tony and some of those guys to step up as vocal leaders. And, and as well, we're, we're starting to build a little bit of depth and some competition, which, you know, I don't know. I've only been here a couple of years, and I don't know that we've had that since I've been here. So it's nice to have that, that if you're not going to do the right things and put in extra time, you know, we got somebody that's, that is doing that, that you're not going to play. So now it's really up to you, and we've got some leverage. So it's been, it's been a good deal. What is the upside of the second period? When you get everybody healthy, everybody in place, and hopefully all that happens by the fall. Yeah. I think the upside is we're going to be a lot more comfortable, and instead of being in the right spot, maybe making a play, maybe not, we're going to be in the right spot and be able to make plays to help change the complexion of the game. And I don't think we did that enough last year. We were Most of the time we knew what we were doing and we were in the right spot, but maybe a step slow because we were thinking or hesitating, so maybe we missed that tackle or we had a, a PBU instead of an interception or we were just right there. You know, you think about it, uh, the, the Michigan game. You know, we were right there and just missed it from a PBU that wins the game. And then obviously they win in, in double overtime. Uh, it happened in the Iowa game as well on, on a cr critical third down. So hopefully now the upside is we, we're playing with a lot more confidence in our abilities and we can make those plays to change the complexion and, and hopefully win some more games. Do you think guys are better at, at just with their ball skills? It seems like we hear about a lot of interceptions. Yeah, I, I, you, you know. Um, they, they are. It's something that we've constantly worked on uh, is, is more deep ball drills because with what we're doing defensively, what we did last year, it's very similar. You know, you, they, you saw they're going to take shots on us. We're, we're going to be aggressive, and uh, that's what you're going to get. So we're just trying to get better and better at playing the ball. And, it's, you know, it's a different skill set. When, and, and you're a little bit younger, but, like, when Pete and I were growing up, you know, all I did, I just I played ball. I played basketball. I played baseball, I put whatever, we went outside and we played ball all day long, all the time, in the summers, in, in the winters, whatever. And now kids, they don't do that. They play one sport. They don't play all the sports. Uh, they play video games and stuff. So their hand-eye coordination and being able to throw and catch a football isn't as good as it used to be. So, it, you know, you've got to adapt it and work on it more. And I think that's something we didn't do the last couple of years is maybe work on ball skills as much as we need to. Um, just, you know, trusting in my technique and being confident just going out there and playing hard every play and, you know, staying focused, playing within the system, knowing those plays are going to come and not pressing too much and just relaxing, knowing that D-line will do their job and the linebacks will do their job and, you know, the plays will come to me and just, you know, locking in and eventually turning those uh, deflections into picks for my teammates and the team. I just noticed on your, on your tape there you got some you know, words written down. Is that something you've been doing for a while? 
Oh uh, yeah, I definitely, I didn't start taping until college, but yeah, ever since I got to college taping, just little reminders, I'm always right child of God on my right wrist, just cause I've been doing that since I was about in sixth grade. So that's always been a big thing. And just different reminders on my left, um, whether it's just to be confident, whether it's just to make plays or mm. just believe in myself each play and just make plays uh, at the end of the day. Mm. Ben, I guess what's sort of the uh, biggest transition for you kind of moving to that new Husky role right now? Yeah, it's definitely a big switch up, but Coach Allen and Coach Joseph have been getting us ready each and every day, and we're getting better every day. But it's a big thing is confidence, and right now I'm, I'm feeling it, so mm -hmm. I'm going to keep on going with it. How about just, I guess, with your eyes and training your eyes? To, I guess. Yeah, that, that's things, the biggest so. part because you got to look at, like, different reads. Like, the receivers are different spots than corner. But yeah, that's the biggest adjustment, like where my eyes go every play, mm -hmm. but I'm getting there. Where are you guys maybe showing other signs of progress, just kind of you know, implementing that new Husky role into the defense? Um, yeah, the big thing is just flying around. If we fly around, give effort, making plays, confidence, mm -hmm. that's, a, that's a big issue, but we're getting there. What are you seeing from guys like Jamie Thompson, maybe even Will Dawkins too? What are those guys showing right now? Yeah, they're, they're getting a lot better. Uh, they're they're uh, making plays. Learning it, it's it's tough for them too to learn it because it's new for everyone. Mm -hmm. But uh, I'm liking what I'm seeing with them too.